Welcome to this episode of Real Chemistry. I'm Dr. Morris. Today what we're going to be talking about is classifying matter. Everything around us that takes up space is made of matter. And when you start chemistry, this lecture is designed to help you start to think about what all of that different matter is made of. And so what we're going to do in this video is talk about what matter is made of and how to classify it into different categories. And then in the next video, we're going to do practice problems where we actually use those categories. So I'll link to that below. So the basic building block of all matter is elements. Everything you see around you is made of elements. And elements are just different types of atoms. So here is one atom. This guy is carbon. You'll notice that our atom has a nucleus in the center. And then around it are a bunch of electrons. Those are red. And the nucleus is positively charged. The reason the nucleus is positively charged is it's made of something called protons, which are positive. And carbon turns out to have six of them. And those positively charged protons attract those red electrons and hold it together, kind of like the solar system. This is just the first pass of what the atom is like, and as you continue studying chemistry, if you continue studying chemistry, then you talk about it in more and more depth. So when I put a bunch of carbon atoms together, I get something that looks like this. This is graphite, so just pure carbon. The same thing your pencil lead is made out of, just a bunch of carbon. Most things around us, though, are not just one element. Most of them are a mixture of elements together, and we'll get to that in a second. Now, every single element that makes up all the different things in the world is categorized on the periodic table. And it's categorized precisely by the number of protons. So, for example, remember that carbon had six protons? Well, you see there's a little six there. On the other hand, if you have something that's made of gold, which turns out to be AU, it has 79 protons. So, this just lists all the different types of atoms we can have and categorizes them by how many protons are in the center. And if I have just one atom, we call that an element. Just one type of atom, we call that an element. Now, if I mix multiple atoms together, we get a molecule. And most things around us are made of molecules. Relatively few things are like our pencil graphite, which is just carbon. The simplest molecule you can make is two hydrogen atoms together. So that H 2, the H stands for hydrogen, and the 2 is the number of atoms. So notice here we have two atoms in that one, two atoms in this one, and two atoms in that one. These are the same element twice, and they're bonded together. So we call that a molecule, even though they're both hydrogen. The bond, we'll talk about in more detail later, but is basically like glue that holds atoms together. So you might see hydrogen written like this, where that line would represent the bond. Or you might see it drawn as two spheres stuck together. And the fact that they're stuck together is communicating to you those are bound together. Similarly, you could make a molecule out of oxygen, two of them. And similarly, you might see this one drawn out with a stick figure like that, where the two lines represent bonds. You can make a molecule out of phosphorus or sulfur. Here we get our first molecule with different elements, water. And it has two hydrogen atoms and one oxygen atom all bound together. And you might see it like this. Again, the lines represent bonds that are holding those atoms together. We could do a carbon dioxide, also a molecule, or glucose. Glucose is a bunch of carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. So, if I, for example, have a cup of water, that's a pure substance. It's just all water. But most things are a mixture. So when we combine more than two different molecules together, we get a mixture. Here's two everyday objects that are examples of mixtures. We got salad dressing, so that's a mixture of vinegar down here and oil up here. And we have Gatorade. Gatorade turns out to be a mixture of water, sugar, food coloring, and electrolytes. And you mix those all together and you get Gatorade. So those are mixtures. They're multiple molecules together. You might notice these two mixtures look different, right? This one on the left are salad dressing depending on where I look at it. If I look down here, it looks like mostly vinegar. If I look up here, it looks like mostly oil. If I look in between, it looks like a mixture of vinegar and oil. And so we have a special name for that. On the other hand, Gatorade looks the same everywhere. And we have a special name for that. Our mixtures can either be heterogeneous or homogeneous. So notice they both end in genius, but the start tells you whether it's different throughout, which is hetero, or the same throughout, which is homo. So homogeneous means that it appears the same everywhere. 
And so ask yourself, which one of these looks the same regardless of where I look at the solution? And the answer to that is the Gatorade. The Gatorade looks the same at the top, bottom, and middle. On the other hand, my olive oil and vinegar mixture that's making salad dressing is heterogeneous. So my salad dressing is heterogeneous and my uh, Gatorade is homogeneous. We can think about classifying all of our matter then into either pure substances, which include elements and molecules, or mixtures, which include heterogeneous things and homogeneous things. So how can we decide what's what? Well, when we look at some piece of matter, we need to say, is it made of one molecule or element? If the answer to that is yes, we have what's called a pure substance. That was one of the first two things we talked about, either elements or molecules. If, on the other hand, it's made of more than one molecule or more than one element, we get a mixture. So we have a mixture. Now we can subdivide pure substances into molecules and elements. If they contain bonds, if they contain bonds, then that makes them molecules. If they don't, that makes them elements. We can subdivide mixtures into heterogeneous or homogeneous, as we saw. If they look the same throughout, then we call that homogeneous. If they do not look the same throughout, we call that heterogeneous. So this is ultimately the classification that you're going to need to be able to do. You need to decide if things are mixtures or pure substances, and you need to be able to decide if they're heterogeneous, homogeneous elements or compounds slash molecules. So just one note here, the word compound and molecule are used interchangeably. So they're synonyms. So sometimes you'll see it written as compound and sometimes as a molecule. Okay, now actually applying these rules is challenging because you actually have to know something about the substance before you can do it. And so in the next video, we'll go through six different substances and we'll think about what category they fall in. Thanks for watching this episode of Real Chemistry.